This is a bug's life. This is a bug's life watch. There is an advance in design by one team. It's an advance in design for everyone. It's cold and rainy in Richmond, Virginia, but today Indiana looks to reclaim its He's reign gone. in the world of men's college soccer. The Hoosiers are on the verge of a fourth national title thanks to unsung Ukrainian Alexei Korol. Two goals in the quarters, two goals in the semis, the game winner Friday against Santa Clara. Freshman Lee Morrison dominant in the air in the other semi on defense and offense. But will he be on target or targeted today? It's the Men's College Cup Championship, Stanford, Indiana, next on ESPN. And welcome a cold and dreary day in Richmond, Virginia, but plenty of reason for some bright play, the Indiana Hoosiers. They have three NCAA championships. The Cardinal looking for their first. It's the championship of the Men's College Cup. I'm Phil Shane, Ty Keo, and glad you could join us today, and hopefully we'll have a little bit of hot play to heat things up. Take a look at the semifinal results. Stanford, a hard-fought 1-0 victory over Young Maryland. Meanwhile, for Indiana, 4-0 over Santa Clara, and that's the one thing that stands out from the semifinals tie, the Hoosiers' dominance. Well, again, for Indiana, as it has been for the last three seasons, the key has been their Ukraine connection. 45 victories in two years, and in the semifinal, Kovalenko set up the game-winning goal and scored one later on. Alexi Karol on fire, two goals on two shots in that 4-0 win. This is the first goal against Santa Clara. Kovalenko on the first shot, the follow-up by fellow Ukraine player Alexi Karol. Later on in the game, Kovalenko would do a one-man show, a dazzling individual effort as he outran the entire Stanford defense and scored from an almost unbelievable angle. Now, as you saw from the double header in the highlights to start the broadcast, Lee Morrison, a big reason the Stanford's here. But to knock off the Hoosiers, they're going to need better production from their experienced players. Well, when you look to the seniors in the Stanford lineup, it's experience and maturity that will carry the day for them if they expect to beat Indiana. And Simon Elliott has experience to burn. He plays internationally for the New Zealand squad. He had two shots in the semifinal. He had two goals in the quarterfinal victory over Virgi Virginia. Here's a shot against Maryland. Christian Lewis pulled it out of the upper corner. And A.J. Sauer, he was the top scorer last year for Stanford. He comes off the bench this season to add a spark in every game for the Stanford attack. Very unselfish as Sauer doesn't have a start this year, but still among the leading scorers. And there's the kid, Morrison, the under-20 star. Will it be able to provide the heroics again today? The championship game and the kickoff next on ESPN. If you've been dreaming about beautiful oak furniture, then you need to see the amazing selection available at the Oak Gallery. Just imagine the durable yet timeless beauty of an oak bedroom suit. Or how about an entertainment center worthy of your living room? Fact is, all the furniture you buy from the Oak Gallery will make your living area more attractive. The Oak Gallery has more oak furniture than any other place in southern Indiana. From computer desks to dining room sets, you'll find fine oak furniture at reasonable prices. Enjoy tomorrow's antiques today at the Oak Gallery. An accident can change your life forever. The problems can be overwhelming. Hi, I'm attorney Ken Nunn. I understand these problems and I'd like to make it easy for you to get legal help. That's why we have a toll-free number at 1-800-888-HURT. So if you've been hurt in an accident, call my office for free advice. And remember, there's never a fee until we get money for you. Put a fighter on your side. Call attorney Ken Nunn at 1-800-888-HURT a space age innovation in televised college basketball. It's called ESPN Full Court. It gives you tons of great college hoops action you couldn't get otherwise. Call DirecTV or Prime Star for ESPN Full Court. 
I'll be back on Tuesday. The number's on the fridge. I color-coded all your meals so you won't be confused. The blue one is a beef dish. B is for beef. The pink one's a pork dish. P is for pork. You get the idea. The green one is for vegetables. It should be violet for vegetables. But I thought you might see violet but think purple and interpret pork, which would defeat the whole purpose of convenient color-coding altogether. Four minutes on high. Stir halfway. Bye, guys. So what do you guys want for dinner? Blue or pink? Did somebody say McDonald's? I hope Mom color-coded breakfast, too. I have never stolen a ball, scored a goal, or won a game. Today's Men's College Cup National Championship game is brought to you by Adidas, official sponsor of Women's World Cup USA 99. By the Chevy Venture. The Venture is here. Let's go. And by College Soccer Weekly Online, the only place to look for scores, news, and in-depth features of your game. www.collegesoccer.com. Pretty pictures, but... Not the best of conditions to determine a championship. We'll tell you about some of the wishes from the coaches a little bit later on today. The puddling around the field, not really on it. And to tell you the truth, it felt a little bit warmer before I saw that. 44 degrees. Expected to drop a little bit before this game is over, but light winds, and that's perhaps the one thing that we can be thankful for. Starting out in goal, Adam Zappala, all he has done in his first two years with Stanford, 27 shutouts. Let's take a look at the rest of the lineups brought to you by Adidas. And perhaps the key to Stanford's chances today is the experience of their back line. Senior sweeper Jamie Clark, Bobby Clark, the coach's son, Gerard Davis from New Zealand, possesses a great deal of composure. In the midfield for Stanford, we talked about Simon Elliott taking charge, but he has two very physical players, Andy Hemmerich and TK Inbody. Hemmerich's long throw-in set up the goal for Stanford in the semifinal. Up front, a very rugged Adam Siegman, a senior, and Corey Wolfolk has the speed to get away from Indiana's defense. Take a look in goal for Indiana. He was not that busy in the semifinals against the Broncos. Zero saves for T.J. Hannig, but he still got the shutout. A strong defense. In fact, the top defense in the nation in front of him for Indiana. Gino DeGuardi, one of the captains for Indiana. Nick Garcia, 97, freshman of the year in NCAA. In the midfield, this is the strength of Indiana. The playmaking of Lavrinenko and Olivania. And freshman Ryan Mack made an impact in the semifinal, helping to set up important goals. Up front, the two Ukraine players, juniors Dima Kovalenko and Alexei Karol, Kovalenko, a finalist for the Herman Award this year. Who knows whether they'll be back for their senior seasons. If they win here today, the odds might be against it, but still one more game to go before they get the championship. And every time that the Hoosiers have taken on Stanford, they have never lost. Early ball coming up for Stanford and headed away by the Hoosiers, Dennis Fideski, 5'9", junior out of Brookfield, Wisconsin. Hoosiers will be moving from the left to the right, wearing their white and red. And the Cardinal attacking the goal to the left. Fideski, a little bit of a missed touch, but it finds a white jersey. And here's perhaps one of the key players, Mazo Alavania, showing no signs of the injured ankle, which he suffered against Santa Clara on Friday. Tough hit there by Gino DeGuardi on the near sideline. Inspirational co-captain for the Indiana Hoosiers. There he's going after the ball again, wearing number two in white for Indiana. Touch back. Daw, all the way into the center of the defense. Morrison, the freshman, and the experienced Jamie Clark. Clark will be one of the guys to keep an eye on. Obviously, Carroll and Kovalenko have the experience, but so does Clark. His father, obviously, a veteran of three World Cups, and he has a lot of experience with him there. And there's Bobby Clark, his dad, keeping an eye on his son, who was very physical and, I guess you could almost say, in case some cases, professional in his defensive effort against Maryland. Here's Wolfolk showing some speed, blasted across the face of the goal mouth and cleared away. Clark getting ahead on that one. Stanford playing with a very conventional back four. Marshaled by Jamie Clark, their number three. 
like to knock the ball around the back, work it to the wide defenders in that four-back system, and use those wide backs to get the ball forward. Nice work by Stanford as Gaw tripped up. Advantage is played. There's Clark as Stanford starting to spread things around. The bullet pass intercepted by Nick Garcia, the sophomore. That long ball from Clark. Could see a lot of those. Garcia basically just throwing his body in the way. Those long balls are going to be skipping. And expect perhaps this game to be decided by a mistake. Jerry Yeagley hopes not. Fourth all-time winningest coach in NCAA history. Looking for his fourth championship. Into the middle and intercepted by DeGuardi. He's one of the workers, as is this player, freshman Ryan Mack. Labrinenko's pass deflected. Out for the throw. Probably because of the very wet conditions out there. Neither team really spending much time with the ball in the back of their team. They want to get it forward earlier. If there's a mistake to be made, they want it as far away from their goal as possible. Alavanya's pass to the near side. Intended for Snow. Stolen away. In body. Tripped up. Ball comes out. Here comes Carroll. Two goals in the quarters. Two goals in the semis. But he won't get his first of the championship game here. Here's a chance for Seaton with a little bit of space. Hannig coming out and just getting there in time to clear it away. A little bit of a gutsy effort by Hannig. Initially, it did not look like he could get there. But his speed saved the day. Well, Indiana, in contrast to Stanford, playing with only three backs. And that means when those balls sometimes are played in the corners, it is up to Hannig, in fact, to be the sweeper and cover, as he did there. Into the box and headed away. Goal kick for the Hoosiers. Indiana coming in at 22-2. and two. The lone losses early in the season to SMU, a young squad which was red hot at the time and actually briefly ranked number one in the nation. The other loss to the defending champion UCLA Bruins <laughs> way back on November 1st. And as you can see, they have had a rough go of it getting here. But once they got to the championship round, handled Santa Clara with relative ease. In fact, Broncos coach Mitch Murray, no bones about it. He said on Friday they were just outclassed. On the field, Elliott bringing it down. He was really unable to get too many shots off in the semifinals. Just that one you saw to open the show, and that was a loaded bullet. Siegman back to win it. Long pass from Gaw, far side for Elliott, who is pushing up into the attack. Keeps it in play, still in. The flag stays down, and Elliott brings it towards the box. Elliott, the New Zealand international, touching it back. Garcia, solid defense to charge out of his sweeper position and win a throw. Excellent read by Indiana's number three, Nick Garcia, out of Plano, Texas. And he's sweeping, but he stepped up there and timed his tackle well. Lou Lavadia, the referee, assisted by Ken Andres and Richard Heron. Fourth official today, Roger Taylor. Here's Elliott. Nice pass for Wolfolk. Takes a body from Podesky, but Stanford holds on. Switch to the near side, looking for in body. Hamrick stepping forward. The outside of the left. He got all of that one, but straight down the pipe. And Hannig was there, and he makes his first save of the game. Something different from Stanford number nine, Andy Hemmerich. We saw what he could do with his rifle throw-ins in the semifinal against Maryland. This time, though, he sees some space out near the edge of the box. Gets the left foot. In fact, Hannig screened by a couple of defenders out in front. That is definitely worth a try with a wet ball. And the fact that Hannig may have been surprised at the shot coming through a few Indiana bodies. 5'11 junior out of Del Mar, California. Integral member of Stanford's championship run. Alavanya, Kovalenko, Labrinenko. Alavanya might sound like he's part of the Ukrainian connection, but actually born and raised in Shearerville, Indiana. And the Hoosier number eight playing for the home state team and one of the leading candidates for player of the year. Finished runner-up in the MAC balloting and fourth as he's on the ball here for the Herman Award. In the middle, deflected away and intercepted by Clark. Alavanya's family 
out of the Serbian section of Yugoslavia. And I can tell you, for one, Jerry Eggley is very glad that they decided on Indiana. Here's Lavrinenko. To the middle, Garcia. Actually, the shot by Kovalenko as he bends it into the corner. Kovalenko dropping back to the midfield and bending it into the upper 90. And the Hoosiers with the early lead. Well, you can't strike a ball much prettier than that. Kovalenko, the ball had eyes. It's got a bend to it. It's curling. And off of his line, Adam Zapala has no chance for it. He was surprised. The good early pass struck first time well into the upper corner. And a first time shot is always more dangerous. Good setup, in fact, by Lavrinenko, number five. The midfielders show that Kovalenko could strike it on the first touch. There's Alavania as the Hoosiers looking for a second through ball for Carole. And read by Hemrich, who shepherds away the Ukrainian. Kovalenko with his 15th to go along with nine assists. You mentioned earlier the goal and the assist, which helped the Hoosiers get to the championship game. In fact, if it wasn't for Kovalenko, they might not have even made it out of the first round. A game-winning goal, 109 minutes in, finally knocking off Matt Champion, Akron. In fact, as you saw, the road to this game, double overtimes in both of their first two contests, and the tough matchup knocking out number one ranked Clemson. It has not been easy for the Hoosiers. Here's Hammer. Well, Stanford goalkeeper Adam Zapala has to be rethinking his positioning on that shot too far off of his line. In particular, when a player has the time and the space, as Kovalenko did on that shot, to look up because of the great ball by Yuri Lavrinenko, number five for Indiana, you have to be closer to your goal line. You won't be able to recover if it's a looping ball, which is what Kovalenko provided. Nice defense by Snow. And the early ball out of the back knocked it away, and Indiana will have it in their offensive zone. So the goal in the seventh minute, as the Stanford defense is beaten for only the 13th time this year. Indiana's defense, number one in the nation, have only given up 10 goals in 24 games. Stanford only 12 before Kovalenko found the net. One thing that Hoosier fans might want to keep in mind as DeGuardi plays it to the outside towards Garcia. The Cardinal have never given up more than two goals this season. So the game is far from over. Snow whiffing on that one as the ball knocked away a throw in for the Hoosiers. Some nine minutes gone here in the first half. And Indiana getting off to a quick start just as they almost did. In the semifinal, first minute of the game, they almost scored against Santa Clara. Hammerts the long throw. Siegmund just deflects it. Here's Wolfolk. He is very dangerous. Skillful and speedy, as you're seeing here. Across the middle, Siegmund touching it outside. Elliott fighting for the ball and cleared away by Garcia, far side. Davis, the other New Zealander. Trying to keep it alive, and Stanford gets a throw. A dangerous chance for the Cardinal, and it was Wolfel, one on two, who got a nice pass to the middle. Look at Gerard Davis, a defender who likes to push forward for Stanford. Also originally from New Zealand, where Stanford coach Bobby Clark was the national team coach for a few years before he came to Stanford. Interesting, it's Morrison on the throw. Punched away, Morrison gets ahead to it, and got it away across the end line. Coming up on the Deuce, Monday, 7 o'clock Eastern time from the city of brotherly love. Florida State taking on Temple in the 10th-ranked Owls. Led by Pepe Sanchez and Lamont Barnes. Well, FSU, 7-foot-2 center Kareem Shabazz will probably have his work cut out for him. Ten and a half minutes gone. They're going to switch the ball. That happens a lot in cold conditions. If the ball's pumped up inside, once you get outside and... The cold temperatures tend to have the air pressure go down, so might actually see this happen a couple of times today. Not only that, the wet conditions, if they feel the ball has taken on some water, you might want to change it more often as well as we look at T.J. Hannig, 
the goalkeeper for Indiana. Hennig has been very adventurous coming outside of his box already in this match, and you wonder if he might want to temper that because of the potential for a slip. There's some bad footing in parts of this field with the steady rain we've had all morning. Through ball, Daw into the attack. Siegman keeps it alive. Wolf fall. Good defense again by the Hoosiers. Wolfolk, very speedy. The question is, will he be able to keep his footing and use that speed in this wet condition? Cleared away and up the line. Still in play. Kovalenko. Mack. And far side for the throw. Had a chance to walk the field earlier today. It's pretty good condition. Well, we stepped on the field about an hour before kickoff, and it's perfect. And that was my first reaction. Perfect to take the six studded shoe. You see here an illustration, a much better grip than a molded plastic sole. And some guys will complain that they can't good, get quite as good of a touch on the ball with the sole of their foot, but they get used to it, and they're certainly going to have better footing. And the majority of the players have switched to that type of shoe. You get a lot better touch than if you're lying on your back on the ground. Still Here's Mac. You would not want to lose a national championship because of the slip in front of your goal. Stanford the other way. Elliott, the experienced veteran. 36 international appearances for the New Zealand national team, including several games for Bobby Clark. It was amazing when you consider what he's been able to do so quickly at Stanford. In body with space. In body has a goal from long range. And and it keeps it in play. Well, when you talk about what Bobby Clark has done at Stanford, they still do not have the maximum number of scholarships which are allowed by the NCAA. Being a private institution, the tuition's quite high too, so a real recruiting challenge for Bobby Clark. He has received one extra scholarship per year uh, compared to his predecessor, Colin Lindors. So that's one of the reasons Bobby Clark has been able to step the program up at Stanford. Parole pulled down, near side assistant referee saw it and calls the foul. Referee agrees and a free kick for the Hoosiers. Free kicks will be somewhat dangerous here today. The attackers know where they're supposed to go. The defenders aren't quite sure and perhaps a slip. Skipping balls also can be dangerous if you drive a low one through some bodies. Looks like Kovalenko wants to get another ball in play. And the referee says, thanks for playing. Lou Lavadia <laughs> will not stop the clock on this one. There's your goal scorer, Dima Kovalenko, number six for Indiana. To that wall, back post, headed back, still in the box, cleared away, near side by Gerard Davis. And out for the throw. Mark, three-time veteran of the world, hey, hey. 70, 74, and 78. He's a goalkeeper for the Scotland squad. Lovable losers, Scotland, and obviously Bobby Clark hoping that he left that in the past. Hard tackle, play on. Indiana still fighting for it for Carroll. Nice effort by DeGuardi to almost keep it in play. Olivani intercepts. A little bit choppy. The both teams actually handling the conditions very well in the early going. Alavanya, a little bit of a sore ankle, suffered in the semifinal. Bigwardy. Stanford intercepts, near side ball for Siegman, and well won by Fideski. Nice recovery by Dennis Fideski. We're watching Alavanya. Not only did he bang up the ankle in the semifinal, he came into the semifinal with a hamstring problem. So, number eight, the center midfielder for Indiana. It's not terribly probable that he'll spend the entire half on the field. I, I would imagine they might want to substitute him Give him a break so that he's got more left for the second half. See the black patch on the sleeve and the three stars. A couple of meanings there. Obviously the stars signifying championships. As Elliott small to the middle has Hannig out of position. Two of the Stanford players expecting the other to get it. And Hannig finally touches it away. Of course, Indiana looking to add a fourth star to that. The black patch which says Army. Not really patriotic, although I'm sure they are as the ball comes to the near side for Elliott. One of the leading proponents, one of the leading 
supporters of Indiana soccer over the past 20 years. Bill Armstrong just passed away in the offseason wearing the patch and also named their stadium on campus Bill Armstrong Stadium and they would like to win one for Army here today. They have the lead and still 30 minutes to go here in the first half of play. Far side in body. He has been on the left, on the right, in the middle all over today. That cross a little off target. Hoosiers three stars being earned in 1982, 1983, and then after a four-year absence, 1988, it has been more than a decade since Indiana could lay claim to the national championship. Perhaps the second most successful men's program in NCAA history. You're somewhat familiar with, with one of the best as Hannick blasts it upfield. Whatever records Indiana does not hold, St. Louis University has. For the middle for Garcia. He's the sweeper, but he does like to push up and actually did get the second goal in the semifinals. Alavanya outside to Mack. Mack mano a mano with Siegmund. Into the middle for Carroll, still loose. Not going to win many head balls against Lee Morris. Might only be a freshman, but he is playing with a lot of experience. Hannig, again outside the area. Very good communication there between the sweeper, Nick Garcia, for Indiana, and his goalkeeper, T.J. Hannig. Garcia held the player off, allowed the ball to come through for T.J. Hannig, and Hannig took control, called for the ball. Far side, Mac. He was the ball player who sent that ball into the middle for Indiana's first goal. Even though he did not get credit with an assist because the save was made. Mack very dangerous from the outside flanks. Here's Wolfolk, and again, you'd expect the speed advantage would go to Wolfolk, but Garcia pretty quick himself, and he reads the game very well. Talk about Alavanya leaving as a senior and the three Ukrainians perhaps leaving as juniors. There's a pretty good chance that Indiana might be without Nick Garcia, only a sophomore now, but obviously showing he has the ability to take it to the next level time. Nick Garcia has been watching very closely. 96 high school player of the year, now a sophomore in Indiana. Nice ball to Siegman. Won well by Indiana. Even on the international stage, Nick Garcia providing goals from a defensive position for the U.S. under-20 national team. And he was instrumental in their qualification for this spring's World Youth Championships to be held in Nigeria. Labrenenko, an assist to his name already. Alavanya quickly to Carole. Carole. Snow. Cross deflected and out of play. A corner hit for the Hoosiers. Speaking of the under 20s, mentioned Garcia with four goals, one of the leading scores. Chris Albright was the other co leading scorer for the under 20 national team. Well, he just had a brilliant goal yesterday, taking on the Jamaican under 20 team. The U.S. won 3 to 1. Lord Lauderdale's Corey Gibbs a goal, Albright a goal, the other one from the penalty spot, and a rather convincing effort in front of a lot of MLS and college and international coaches yesterday as the U.S. heading to Nigeria on a good note. In swinger, near post, headed away by Elliott. Kovalenko. Dangerous ball over the outstretched fingertip, loose in the area, and slammed home by Hoosiers. Labrenenko now a goal and an assist. And a wonderful cross provided by Kovalenko, who scored the first goal because it pulls the goalkeeper Zapala out of position. Good follow up on the pass from Alexi Kroll. So the cross by Kovalenko, Alexi Kroll puts it across the face of the net. To be finished off by Yuri Lavrenenko. Adam Zapala pulled out of position by that Dima Kovalenko cross from the right side. Maybe on a dry field, a little bit more push from Zapala, but that was a brilliant cross by Kovalenko. Just enough to tease Zapala. A lot of goalies might have stayed their line, but that was a dangerous ball, and the Hoosiers capitalized. And Alexi Carolla did a fantastic job of tracking the ball down after it had gotten in behind Zapala, and then turn it 
Carroll turned it across the face of the goal to set up the finish by Lavrinenko. Snow's cross well off target and a goal kick up coming for Stanford. So a goal and an assist for both Lavrinenko and Kovalenko. Talk about Alexei Karol perhaps being the unsung Ukrainian, but now with four goals and an assist in the last three games, it looks like it might be Lavrinenko's turn to be called that, but he has been brilliant here today. In body, Elliott with space. This game is far from over. Elliott to the 18. Across the face of the goal, Mack gets a second crack at the apple and clears it away. In body on the give and go. Cleared away by Lavrinenko back on defense. It is the championship game of the Men's College Cup. The Cardinal, 18, 4, and 2. Number 11 in the nation against second-ranked Indiana. Phil Shane, Ty Keogh with you. Cold and dreary conditions that just got a little bit more dreary for the Stanford Cardinal. They have not given up more than two goals all year. We haven't even finished the first 20 minutes, and the Hoosiers have put two on the board. Moving from the right to the left, Stanford trying to get back in this one. There's Morrison. Wolfolk, top of the box. Wolfolk on the ball. Wolfolk pulled down. Penalty. Wolfolk knocked to the turf. Garcia can't believe it, but the Cardinal will have a chance to cut the lead in half from 12 yards out. Tremendous hustle by Corey Wolfolk. But in fact, a tough call against Nick Garcia. It's Wolfuck who puts his shoulder into the side of Garcia first, perhaps causing the first foul. Finally, Garcia drags him down ever so slightly as they tumble to the turf. And that's a tough call against Nick Garcia. He didn't really commit much of a foul whatsoever, but the aggressiveness of Corey Wolfuck forced the issue. A little bit of pushing and shoving going on. They'll set things up. Give credit to Wolfhook, though, for being as aggressive as he was to bring about this penalty kick. Now the referee goes to the right, and the players on the left are starting to line up. Basically, they're trying to hit that crux, the closest point to the penalty kick, because they all have to be about 10 yards away. And obviously, they are not. And with that in mind, a yellow card. And it looks like they're going to call two yellow cards, and both against Stanford. Hemrich won. The other is either to Morrison or Inbody, but Inbody looks like he'll get it. And regardless, Elliott, the player from the spot, and Hannig on the line. Elliott scores. It's 2 1. The Cardinal back in it. For Corey Wolfolk out of Ann Arbor, Michigan. Credit for drawing the foul in the box. Simon Elliott makes no mistake, the senior from Wellington, New Zealand. Got T.J. Hannock to go the wrong way. How huge is that goal as Indiana quickly on the break? This was a game that was rapidly heading towards getting out of control for Bobby Clark's Cardinal, but right now they're back in it, and who knows? The Hoosiers on their heels. Well, we mentioned Simon Elliott's experience with the New Zealand national team, the maturity level that would have to come to the fore. He took the penalty kick very coolly. talked about it we touched on it on Friday how 2 nothing is the most dangerous lead you're starting perhaps to sense why now can the Cardinal take advantage remember how much Indiana seemed to be in control of this game just two minutes ago and now all of a sudden Stanford perhaps one slip away from knotting things up there's Corey Wolfolk out of Ann Arbor Michigan and his aggressive play set up the contest between him and Nick Garcia that resulted in the penalty kick call we're at the midway point of the first half and a timeout on the field. Indiana 2, Stanford 1. Thanks, Dad. You can't do this with Caravan. Thanks. You can't do this with Voyager. Thanks, Pop. A little help? The Chevy Venture is available with a remote control sliding side door. So, you can get more done and have more fun. 
Now get the OnStar system in installation at no extra charge, a $1,300 value when you sign up for a year of service. Chevy Venture. Let's go. Did you know that when you buy McDonald's Chicken McNuggets, you get these wonderful mechanically embroidered white napkins at no extra charge? And you'll need lots of napkins because these golden McDonald's Chicken McNuggets come with any one of four dipping sauces. Imagine that. The exquisite taste of those delectable delights coupled with hours of dipping and cleaning fun for the whole family. All this can be yours. Where? Did somebody say McDonald's? Napkins retain no value after initial use. COD's only McNuggets come in 6, 9, and 20 piece. Eurosport, call for a free soccer catalog, 1-800-934-3876. The Women's World Cup comes around just once every four years. So we practice, and we train, and we train. It's a long time to wait. But fortunately, time flies when you're having fun. And time for another NCAA flashback. Not that long ago, one year ago yesterday, Indiana, UCLA, not the championship game, but the semifinals, triple overtime, and Seth George with the goal or putting the ball in the middle, knocked home, and UCLA ends up getting the goal from McKinley Tennyson to move on to the championship game, which they eventually won. 2-1 here today. Hoosiers looking for their fourth, and they've gotten a lot of play from these three guys who have combined for 14 goals. Three guys who came to Rochester, New York at the age of 14 and have now stepped into the Indiana Hoosiers program and have been dominant over the last three years. Long ball from Snow. Far side. Alavanya, Lavrenenko, Kovalenko. Back post, Mac. Oh, and just whiffing on the side volley was Lavrenenko. But you can see the Hoosiers just able to put numbers in the box. Not only that, Alavanya with a beautiful through ball. There's Wolfolk, and he was one on one with Garcia. Talked about the 14 goals the three Ukrainians have combined on. Basically, talking about those three getting involved with each other. Because Lavrenenko with five goals, Kovalenko. Actually, now with six goals, Kovalenko with 15, and Carroll with 16. Well, back into the game is Corey Wolfolk and Stanford. That's probably foul against Wolfolk. He uses his shoulder into the back of Nick Garcia. And I'll tell you what, Wolfolk worked it well, but that was not really much of a foul by Nick Garcia. NFL coaches perhaps recognize that move. If you saw what Wolfolk actually did, he swung his arm over Garcia and actually then stuck it under Garcia's arm and as he fell so it looked like Garcia on him. Yeah. looked like Garcia was pulling him down so whether it was intentional or not good play by Wolfolk and the Cardinal are back in it just over 20 minutes left to go here in the first half 2-1 Hoosiers with the early two goal lead as Kovalenko and Labrinenko exchanging goals and the Cardinal with the penalty kick. Wolfolk, no luck on that one. Now, Wolfolk initiated it with a shoulder charge on Nick Garcia, but a shoulder charge must be from the side and shoulder to shoulder. It was a bit from behind. So if there was any true foul there, it was probably initially against Wolfolk. There's Morrison in the middle. Snow. Well won by Inbody. 5'10 junior from Del Mar, California. High school teammate of Andy Hemmerich, and they have been two of the bright spots for the Cardinal here today. So's Wolfolk. Return ball. Davis into the box to the end line. Deflected by Garcia. Some of the Stanford fans wanted a handball. Not intentional, though. They won't get a second penalty kick from something like that. Well positioned was Nick Garcia on that cross. 
Clark into space. Cleared away off of Siegman's boot. Let's jump back and see where the ball hit Garcia. Now one of the better attacks in this match by Stanford. A good change of pace there. Now here's Garcia. It comes in straight on the chest. And it may have appeared to have been a handball in regular speed, but in the slow motion, it was obvious. No contact by the hand. And even if it had hit the arm, you could see Garcia, both arms at his side. Most referees will let you get away with that. Garcia in perfect position and a throw in for Stanford looking to knock things up. Now, Gerard Davis showed a good change of pace coming forward from his defensive position to cross that ball for Stanford. New Zealand Youth International. Way! Chested back in body trying to get the turn but well won by Karol. The Ukrainians can play defense. Kovalenko knocked it to the turf and a free kick upcoming for the Hoosiers. Women's World Cup coming your way in the summer. ESPN, ESPN2, and ABC. Norway trying to hold on to the crown. The U.S., a gold medal in tow, trying to win it back. All next summer on ESPN, ESPN2, and ABC. Had a chance yesterday to see one of the players who could win it back, Cindy Parlo, who won the Herman Award as the best women's college player in the nation this year to go along with the one she won last year to go along with the Missouri Athletic Conference uh, champion or Missouri Athletic Club award she won for the last two years. Everything won except the 1998 NCAA championship which was won by the University of Florida just one week ago. Tyler Hawley the freshman out of Wisconsin coming into the game for snow a little bit more of an attacking midfielder. No, perhaps a little bit more on the defensive side. Lavrenenko to the near side, too much juice. Phil Parla Overbeck, also a part of those Herman Award ceremonies yesterday. Star defender for the U.S. Women's National Team. And the coverage on ESPN and ABC this coming summer of the Women's World Cup. All 32 games. That will be shown. Final from the Rose Bowl in Pasadena should be a good one. Sold out. Was it Sanford Stadium in Athens for the championship game of the gold medal game of the 1996 Olympics? Be quite a turnaround to see 100,000 people cheering on the red, white, and blue in a Women's World Cup final. That is a possibility. Near side, Wolfo gets a second chance. Clear it away. Fideski taking a boot to the shin. Hammers, high school teammate in body, up the line. They thought they had a throw in. The Stanford bench off the bench and mass. Holly, Lavrenenko, Bidwardi intercepted and blasted away by Morrison. Siegman trying to throw a body in. A little bit of a surprise in the lack of a substitution at the moment. Normally right around that 20 minute mark, right around the timeout time, Wolfolk or Siegmund will sit down and A.J. Sauer will step in. But at this point, Sauer still on the bench as Bobby Clark looks on. The three normally split about an hour's worth of time. Each. Labrinenko. Clark heads it to the back post. Mack to the middle. Guardi back towards Mack. Knock to the turf. Who's the man for the foul? No call. The scores. The lone change in Stanford's starting lineup from the semifinal to the final. Gores, the 6-2 sophomore from Minnesota. I spoke to Bobby Clark about that change. He says Gores does very well in wet, heavy conditions. He's a big, strong, more physical player. That's why the adjustment was made. Nice work again here side by Stanford. For those people who thought the Cardinal would just pack it in the box and slam it upfield. There have been a few long balls, but a very good game considering the conditions, especially. In the middle, Duarte intercepts. A little bit of a slip by Hawley in body. Elliott. Gauze. In the middle of the area looking 
for in body. Knocks to the turf. No call. And Indiana intercepts. Kovalenko. Upfield for Carole, who holds on to possession with a nice deft touch back. Kovalenko looking for Hawley, and we might have spotted the one guy who didn't change his studs, his, his studs so far today. 14 minutes and change left to go in the first half of this NCAA championship. Another championship next week, women's volleyball. A new champion on the verge as Stanford knocked out. Semifinals pitting Nebraska and Penn State, Long Beach State and Florida. You can see it next week on ESPN2. Shot over the bar. And a goal kick up coming for Indiana. Matt Fundenberger coming into the game for Kovalenko. Fundenberger, 13 goals in 1997, only two in 98. With 11 on Indiana, sophomore actually got better this year, says Jerry Yeagley, because he diversified his game. Kovalenko getting a breather. Again, only one shot, one goal. Not a bad percentage. Lavrenenko still on the ball. Also an assist for Kovalenko. Parole, top of the box. Near side, in body. He has been impressive this weekend. Sigmund on the turn. Goff. Gores. Long ball, Hannig dropping back inside his net, but that one wide to the left. Talk about the experience between these two teams. Indiana looking for their 50th postseason victory. Stanford, four. They're looking for their fifth. And all of the victories so far this season, 1962, 1978, 1991, 92, and last year, 97, Stanford made it to the champion, made it to the NCAA playoffs. They never won a game before this year. That might be a little misleading, though, because four of those five losses came against a team that was eventually fighting it out for the title in the championship game. In the middle, Carroll gets ahead on it, but over the bar. Indiana and Stanford, a tale of two teams, somewhat different. And again, the most important one is Indiana looking for its fourth championship and Stanford looking for its first. And those 48 NCAA, actually 49 NCAA tournament wins for Indiana, second only all time to St. Louis University's 59 victories. Far side, Mack spinning it around. Cleared away by Zapala. Zapala again, 27 career shutouts, but that just goes to show how powerful this Hoosier attack can be. Ollie's cross well off target. 11 minutes left to go in the first half. Goal in the seventh minute, Kovalenko. Knocking it home. Goal in the 20th minute as Lavrenenko took a touch from Carroll after a cross by Kovalenko. And then the penalty kick drawing Stanford back into it. Here's Carroll. In front to Fundenberger, and Fundenberger too far offside the call. Kind of interesting, the penalty kick. Indiana has not allowed a penalty kick to be converted before today. Stanford never even had a penalty kick coming into today. Well, interesting about the penalty kick call. It is controversial, but also the momentum didn't change that much. Stanford didn't really crank it up from there, but it did have the effect of perhaps slowing Indiana down because they were like a runaway freight train with that 2-0 lead. Here's in body. Wolfolk to the end line. Wolfolk to cross, and he'll win a corner kick. Only a sophomore, number 23 for Stanford, Corey Wolfolk. 
Very impressive. He does not give up. Got the speed. You've seen some flashes of the skill as well. First corner of the game for Stanford. Cleared away by Fundenberger. The shot by Davis. A lot of power on it, but not much accuracy, and it still remains 2-1. College Hoops Wednesday, 9.30 Eastern time from Minneapolis, Minnesota. The Golden Gophers taking on fourth-ranked Cincinnati. Melvin Levitt, the high scorer. Kenyon Martin, one of the best defensive players for the Bearcats. And Clem Haskins continuing his quest to become the all-time winningest coach in men's basketball history. Again, 9.30 Eastern on ESPN. Wolfolk dropping it back. Gone to Inbody. And Inbody, again, don't want to slight him at all. He has been very impressive over these two games. Coming up this left flank. Labrinenko ran into a wall of red. Here's Garcia. Fundenberger shows. Sophomore from Indiana dropping it back. Labrinenko. Nice ball to Mack. Heading it down for Fundenberger, who did not quite expect it, but Indiana maintains possession. Mack. Dropping the ball back. Dugardi. Labrinenko. Parole heading it across, but too close to Zapala's waiting arms. One thing that stands out a little bit, Ty, Alavanya not really getting that involved. Remember, we talked about the injury to his ankle, but he was already coming in with a little bit of a hamstring pull. And on a day like today, do you think that might be bothering him? Well, for sure, the cold, rainy conditions, the hamstring could tighten up. He's going to just do his job, hold the center, have some of the other guys pick up some of the work part of it, of the midfield position. He's going to try and be the brains of the midfield for Indiana. I talked to Bobby Clark, the Stanford coach, before the match. I said, hey, how are these California guys going to react to these inclement conditions? It's very chilly out there and very rainy. He said, well, for himself, this was a fine summer's day in Glasgow, <laughs> which is where he's from. Down into the near side. Hemorrhage turning it upfield for the card. What was that Mark Twain line, though? Coldest winter I ever spent was a summer in San Francisco. So <laughs> June, July, and August in San Francisco. I guess all he had to tell his Cardinal team was just pretend it's summer, guys. There's A.J. Sauer. You can see the heat coming up from the heaters behind the bench, but the most important thing is Sauer still with the warm-up on. He's normally out there for about a half an hour to 20 minutes in the first half, and he has yet to get on the field here today. The word from the bench is that he is healthy. It's not an injury situation. It's really, so far, Adam Siegman as well as Corey Wolfolk, they've been doing such a great job up front for Stanford. They don't feel they need A.J. Sauer yet. In swinger. Headed down by Elliott. Davis, the other New Zealander, touching it to the middle. In body. Siegmund near side. Can he keep it in play? Yes. Dances over one tackle, but they cannot get past O'Guardi. Back quickly from the midfield. Parole, Fundenberger has been a little rough for the offensive side since coming onto the field. Here's Davis. He perhaps had the best chance for a goal for Stanford before the penalty kick as he danced past two defenders and put a cross to the middle. This is some pretty good work here by Stanford. Combination play down the left side. They brought it back out and switched it up to the other side. Indiana maintains their composure against the Stanford charge. Stanford trying to establish a rhythm here, but the midfield pressure by Indiana has been disruptive enough so far. You'll see Stanford put together three or four passes, but they really don't get the penetration. And Indiana continues to chase and eventually forces the giveaway. Blasted away by Hannett. Touched back off of Clark's head. Mentioned the New Zealand connection for Stanford. Well, another New Zealand connection also right now. Under 16 championships in Christchurch, New Zealand. The U.S., some of the young players, future World Cup stars perhaps. Right in the running, a 10-0 victory over the Solomon Islands and a scoreless tie against that man's old team, New Zealand. Bobby Clark also spent some time coaching the Dartmouth squad, winning three Ivy League championships there before he went to New Zealand to coach the national team. Headed back by Fideski. Parrish, who had a couple of assists in Indiana's semifinal win. 
cross field to Mack. Alavanya is pushing into the attack a little here. Lavrinenko calls for the ball. Lavrinenko, Carroll, back to Lavrinenko. A little bit of frustration as he tried to push the defender away, but Davis did just enough to shut him down. Alavanya, Carroll deadens the ball, made it look easy, and Carroll quickly gets the shot off. Still 2-1, four minutes left to go in the first half of the 1999 Men's College Cup Championship. Of course, if you want to see the 99 championship from Charlotte, North Carolina, you got to be there. 704-522-6500. Tickets went on sale this weekend. Women's College Cup in San Jose, California. You see the phone number. You can also check it out online, ncaachampionships.com. Big year for soccer next year in the States. Lavrinenko spins out of play. Three and a half minutes remaining in the first half. Not a bad start. Three goals already here in the first half. Indiana and Jerry Yeagley look to be completely in control with that 2-0 lead quite early in the half, in fact. The controversial penalty kick call against Indiana resulted in the goal by Simon Elliott from the penalty kick spot. Gars headed it back. Elliott wins it into space for Siegman. He just does not stop running. Siegman, near side in body showing. He'll drop it back to Gall. Hamrich. Two Hoosiers in front. Hamrich denied by Hawley. Good defense. Tyler Hawley, only a freshman out of Cedarburg, Wisconsin. There's the full. Touched up field by DeGuardi. Fundenberger, Fundenberger near side for Carroll. Morris in the Youth International, beaten to the ball, and Carroll into the box. Carroll dances past one defender, touch to the near post, and into the side netting. Just getting a finger to it, Zapala. Carroll had him leading, but Zapala comes up huge. Just to the outside of the net, the fingertip save by Adam Zapala. But look at the tremendous balance exhibited by Alexi Carroll. Good reaction there, almost toe-packed, toe-poked it past Zapala at the near post. Good reaction save. But what we're seeing here also is the advantage a player like Alexi Carroll has with his superior balance, the wet footing, a problem for the Stanford defenders. They can't react to his moves. For the Hoosiers to the back post, punched away. No try to even grab that one by Zapala. Other thing, the smaller players, the lighter players, as you might expect, keeping their footing. We've already seen Hawley knock down and slip a couple of times, and that time Morrison went down to the turf too early. Zapala keeps his team in the match. Good turner by Alexi Carole. He has his head up. He had beaten Lee Morrison. He beats another defender. That's Clark. And he nearly snuck it past Zapala. Full credit to Zapala for protecting that near post. In body looking for Wolfolk and well read by Fideski. Fideski, one of the unsung heroes in this Hoosiers squad. Junior out of Brookfield, Wisconsin. Bundenberger. Oh! Loose ball. Carroll, goal! Goal for Carroll. Everything going the Hoosiers' way today, it looks like. Berger missed the ball and straight to the man of the hour. A fine finish by Alexi Carroll, but Fundenberger, yeah, Fundenberger, he should refuse the assist on this. It's almost embarrassing. Fundenberger shanks this ball. It goes directly onto the foot of Alexi Carroll, but he knows how to put it away nicely, in fact, as he does. Here's Fundenberger, good hustle to win the ball. Now this one, he completely shanks. It goes directly to perhaps the best finisher on the field. He puts it away, Alexei Kuroll. Another goal for the Ukraine connection. The goal coming in the final minute of the first half. Kuroll with the goal, his 17th of the year and his fifth from the quarterfinals on. Take a look at some of the things you can expect to see on worldwide soccer in the coming months, plus a recap from the first half of the play. Just second away. Kuroll, two goals in the quarters, two goals in the semis, 
and a goal here today to go along with an assist. So a goal and an assist for all three Ukrainians as the first half comes to a close. And the first time this year, the Cardinal have found their net dented three times in a game and were only at halftime. 3-1 Hoosiers. An impressive performance from Indiana University, but 45 more minutes remain. Can the Cardinal find a way to get back into this one? For Jerry Agley, just 45 minutes away from his fourth national championship. We'll be back to start the halftime festivities when we come back. The Hoosiers, an impressive first half performance. Can they keep it up? During the year, we spent a lot of time with each other, both on the field and off. It brings us closer together, and that helps us play better. When Lil has the ball, I know exactly where she needs me to be. It's like we can read each other's minds. holiday travel kit. Call today. Son, your mother and I have to talk to you. It's important. Marijuana. <sighs> the wacky weed, it is bad. Of this I know, believe your dad. Remember this, it's your decision. But marijuana can lead to prison. Any way you choose to talk with your kids about drugs is a good way. Call for your free brochure. Okay, I'll be back on Tuesday. The numbers are on the fridge. I color-coded all your meals so you won't be confused. The blue one is a beef dish. B is for beef. The pink one's a pork dish. P is for pork. You get the idea. The green one is for vegetables. It should be violet for vegetables. But I thought you might see violet but think purple and interpret pork, which would defeat the whole purpose of convenient color-coding altogether. Four minutes on high. Stir halfway. Bye, guys. So what do you guys want for dinner? Blue or pink? Did somebody say McDonald's? I hope Mom color-coded breakfast, too. Today's Men's College Cup National Championship is brought to you by Adidas, official sponsor of Women's World Cup USA 99. By the Chevy Venture. The Venture is here. Let's go. And by College Soccer Weekly Online, the only place to look for scores, news, and in-depth features of your game www.collegesoccer.com. Maybe a touch of facetiousness, but when Jerry Yagley talks about the number 13, the blonde-headed Alexi Carroll, he calls him the Klinsman of Indiana. Well, he might not be Jurgen Klinsman yet, but you can start to see why the comparison is there. Well, we have field conditions today that probably favor a good one-on-one -on -one player, which Alexei Karol is, and, and that is the analogy to Jurgen Klinsman. Nice speed, good balances that we've seen also. But overall, we're looking at the number one team defensively in the nation, Indiana, and the number four team defensively in the nation, Stanford, but we've had four goals in the first half of play. I think that has something to do also with the wet field conditions. Definitely. Now, the real question for the Stanford Cardinal, they got perhaps a little bit of a fortunate break on the penalty kick. There might have been some contact here or there, but they came back to cut the lead in half. They still go to the locker room trailing by two. Do they have enough to come back? Well, the Indiana confidence factor did go down after the controversial call because at that moment, you could see maybe Stanford would not be able to bring something from this game after going down 2-0 so early in the match. But now this third goal by Indiana to open up a two-goal lead again, that could have been fatal, especially the way it occurred. It's just not your day for Stanford when a miss kick in fact, set by Fundenberger, sets up that goal by Alexi Kroll right before halftime. Now, if you're running to the refrigerator for some refreshment because you thought the half was almost over, we'll show you that highlight in a moment. We talked about the wet conditions. Maybe on a dry field, Fundenberger ends up getting that shot on goal, but it spins off his boot and straight into Alexei Kroll's path, 
And another element of his Klinsman like game is the fact that when he gets a chance, he puts it on target. Well, Alexi Kroll has shown us good moves and good speed, but not only that, he's a very efficient finisher. He doesn't need a whole lot of time to set it up, and he just slots it past the goalkeeper. Perhaps the motto for the 1998 season for Indiana was unfinished business. They thought they deserved the championship last year. They're halfway towards claiming it this year. RSI Warehouse is a distributor of roofing and vinyl siding. We stock five styles of Owens Corning shingles in many colors along with all the accessories. And we deliver them when you need them, right to your rooftop. RSI is also the Midwest's largest distributor of Accord vinyl siding with complete lines in 16 colors. You won't believe our enormous inventory of quality supplies. For roofing and siding, visit our showroom on the corner of West 11th and Rogers, Bloomington. RSI Roofing and Siding. Scientific studies prove that bigger is definitely better. And Kilroy Sports Bar is now huge. That's right, Kilroy Sports Bar is bigger and better with an all new upstairs party area featuring live entertainment, including Rich Hardesty on Wednesday nights. Kilroy Sports Bar is also your place to rent for parties of 50 to 200 people. And while the weather is nice, enjoy your frosty libation on the Kilroy Sports Bar party on the roof. Upstairs, downstairs, inside and out, the newly expanded Kilroy Sports Bar throws the best parties in town. How do you reach the 1999 NCAA Men's Soccer Championship? You need amazing footwork, explosive speed, dominating defense, and for the rest of us, we'll need a couple of these. There's a new place to get your kicks, and the only way to get your ticks is to call Ticketmaster at 704-522-6500 or visit www.ncaachampionships.com. It's the NCAA College Cup in Erickson Stadium, Charlotte, December 1999. This message furnished by the NCAA. This game is not about how cool I am. This game is not about how big I am or how tall I am. This game is not about money, chromosomes, or a single player. This is my game. This is my future. Watch me play. Women's World Cup Summer 99. So you're halfway towards finding out who will be the NCAA champion. To find out what happens after the fact, only one place to turn. Rob Stone and Worldwide Soccer. This is Rob Stone from ESPN2's Worldwide Soccer. You're watching the best in college soccer right now. And if you want more of the world's most popular sport, then catch Worldwide Soccer every week only on the Deuce. Highlights from around the globe. Oh, that is quite nice. Worldwide Soccer not only shows you what happened, we will show you why. Tommy Smith goes worldwide inside to break down tactics and strategies, analysis you won't find anywhere else. Worldwide Soccer brings you the faces of the game. Meet your favorite players on the field and off. No one covers the U.S. soccer scene better. We'll show you Major League Soccer from opening kickoff to MLS Cup 99, the new look men's national team, and the road to the Women's World Cup as the United States looks to claim the crown at home this summer. From breaking news exactly. to breaking records, it's a wide world of soccer out there. To keep up, watch Worldwide Soccer every week. So a big year of soccer ahead. Worldwide Soccer will keep you up to date. One thing to find out, we'll be the champion. Highlights and stats from the first half next. You're just too good to be true. Can't take my eyes off you. You'd be like heaven to touch. Hey! If you think the Cavalier looks good, wait till you know it can go up to 100,000 miles before its first scheduled tune-up. Chevy Cavalier. The more you know, the better it looks. Genuine Chevrolet. And after 13 years, I can finally say I have absolutely no urge to play this game. <laughs> 
new Asteroids is here for PC and PlayStation with 3D graphics, deadlier weapons, and two-player action. It's the most addictive game ever. 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 Raymond! You're a weak man, Ray. Asteroids, they're back. <laughs> If you're not playing next week, how about if you come back and make believes? Man, there's got to be a better way. Now when you drink Sprite, look under the cap and you could win $25,000 in the Sprite salary cap game. A little help to get you through those tough times. Did you know that when you buy McDonald's Chicken McNuggets, you get these wonderful mechanically embroidered white napkins at no extra charge? And you'll need lots of napkins because these golden McDonald's Chicken McNuggets come with any one of four dipping sauces. Imagine that. The exquisite taste of those delectable delights coupled with hours of dipping and cleaning fun for the whole family. All this can be yours. Where? Did somebody say McDonald's? Napkins retain no value after initial use. CODs only. McNuggets come in 6, 9, and 20 piece. Just moments away from the start of the second half of play, and when you take a look at what Indiana was able to do in the first half, Stanford still has its work cut out for them. 3-1 Hoosiers at the break. Phil Shane Ty Keo with you. Some very cold and dreary conditions here in Richmond, but the Indiana Hoosiers have lit up the scoreboard, and I'm sure that warms a few hearts here, especially the ones wearing Hoosier red. Well, in fact, Indiana got straight into the attack. They put a lot of pressure on Stanford's experienced defense, and that midfield pressure did not allow Stanford to get out of their own end, and that set up some offensive opportunities for Indiana. And as we've seen, as far as finishing, they know how to take care of those. Look at the highlights in a second, but first, let's take a look at the numbers from the first half of play. Statistics brought to you by College Soccer Weekly. Take a look at the shots, and really, it's been a rather even game for Stanford in the midfield, but Indiana has been able to get into the Cardinal end a lot more often than the Cardinal have been able to get in front of T.J. Hanning. And really, considering the wet conditions, not that many fouls. You normally will see a lot more slide tackling and physical play with these wet conditions. So as far as the highlights, though, most of them come for the Hoosiers. Indiana, as we mentioned, on the board early, and it's Lavrinenko just pushing a ball to Kovalenko. He hits it first time. He uses the defender in front of him as a screen, leaving Adam Zappala, the Stanford goalkeeper, no chance, who perhaps was a bit too far off of his line. Kovalenko then provides a fantastic cross. It draws, draws out Zapala. Karol gets it across to Lavrinenko. So there's your Ukraine connection. All three of them involved in that goal, and Lavrinenko finished it. And some controversy here. Corey Wolfe for Stanford. He puts the shoulder in first and a little bit from behind on Andy Garcia. And then he stays with it the entire way. Good physical aggressiveness, but I think he drew a penalty here by tangling himself up purposely with Andy Garcia. In fact, at the very end of this, you'll see he puts his arm in underneath Garcia, falls on top of him to make it appear that Garcia has dragged him down. I don't believe Garcia did drag him down, but the penalty was called anyway. Simon Elliott coolly takes it with it, his poise possessed from international experience with the New Zealand national team. This is the goal that might have decided the game. There's still 45 minutes to go, but a missed kick by Fundenberger over to Alexia Carroll. Alexia Carroll makes it look so easy. His fifth goal of the last three rounds, still one more half to go. If there's a tournament MVP, it might just be Indiana's number 13. When we come back, the second half kickoff, the Hoosiers halfway to their fourth national title, and we have it right here on ESPN. Can your radio do this? Only one radio gives you such big stereo sound, yet it's small enough to fit almost anywhere. The incredible Wave Radio from Bose. Only the Wave Radio can fill any room in your house with sound that popular science called a sonic marvel. The Bose Wave Radio. It'll make a big difference in the way you listen to music. Call today to learn about our free shipping offer, 30-day in-home trial, and six-month payment plan. The biggest plus for the customer in this edition is putting in huge selections of merchandise in virtually every price point. We have items starting as low as $20. We have a beautiful diamond pendant at $69. Diamond stud earrings, $299.
At Goldcasters, everyone can afford a diamond. Don't you just love Christmas time? I do. Surprise, surprise, since he's on the rise. Now Melvin Levitt leads the high-flying Bearcats against Quincy Lewis and the Gophers. Cincinnati, Minnesota, Wednesday at 9.30 on ESPN. I'm always visualizing as far as riding and stuff, whether I'm laying in bed or I'm getting ready for a contest. I think it helps a lot. I think they say that with golfing, too. You know, if you visualize your shot, imagine, you know, doing it the way you really want to do it and it's supposed to work out, isn't it? Let's see it. <laughs> see with me. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, shit. See with me. <laughs> that noise work. <laughs> I hit your crane there. Uh, The two teams back out on the field. The second stanza ready to start. The Hoosiers with a 3-1 lead over the Stanford Cardinal. But as you've seen, Stanford can come back. But can they come back against the connection? Well, we talked about them at the very beginning of the show. And boy, have they delivered all six of Indiana's shots coming from the Ukraine connection. But more importantly, a goal for each of these players who came over from the Ukraine as at the age of 14 and went to high school in Rochester, New York. What a re recruiting coup for the Indiana Hoosiers three years ago. Second half underway, the white and red of Indiana will be moving from the right to the left. The Cardinal dressed Stanford Cardinal will be attacking the old to the right or at least trying to. Davis, the New Zealander, up the line but out of play. Parrish, Garcia, still in the back for Indiana. And on the far side, it looks like Snow might be back out there as well. In fact, yes, he is. Does not look like any changes in the starting lineup for Indiana. Still a back line of Davis, Morrison, Clark and Hemorrhage out there for Stanford. Looks like the only change they might have made. Corey Wolfel is out, and A.J. Sauer will start the second half. We were wondering where he was in the latter parts of the first half as the red-headed Sauer ends up winning the loose ball away, but a foul was whistled beforehand. Sauer ended up starting or playing or spending the entire first half on the bench, and that's very rare. He normally gets about 20 minutes a half. And again, you have to hand it to him for his composure and maturity for a guy who is the leading scorer and basically the leader of the Stanford team last year to accept a senior season in which he did not get one start. It was that leadership that he did show, one of the reasons Stanford is here today. Plus, it didn't really diminish his offensive production. Seven goals and six assists. No, in fact, even coming off the bench, number seven, A.J. Sauer for Stanford. Still the second leading scorer for Stanford. The goal scorer today, Simon Elliott, the top scorer this season for Stanford. Sauer also entering the game for the 78th time in his Stanford career. Good enough for second behind Ricky Gold, who had 82 starts, or 82 games in the early 90s. So Sauer will go down in Stanford's history book, but I'm sure he'd like to see an NCAA title next to it. And they still have another 42 and a half minutes. Here we go, Gob. Long ball up front for Siegman. Played the entire first half and starts the second. Touched away by Nick Garcia. Sophomore out of Plano, Texas. Talked about Snow back out there at right back. Well, with Garcia coming in, Snow was forced to change his style and change his position. More into a marking back when he was the sweeper before Garcia got there. And Snow wins that loose ball and touches it near side to Kovalenko. Coral sliding in, cleats out on both players, but the whistle will go against Stanford. Derek Shanahan is out there, the freshman out of St. Charles, Illinois. Some U.S. youth experience. Some good hustle there, in fact, by Derek Shanahan, number 18 for Stanford, to pressure 
Dima Kovalenko forced him to give up the ball just a moment ago. In fact, it looks like, remember we talked about the physical play of Chris Gores and perhaps a little bit more defensive intensity. Well, he's now on the bench because Stanford needs some offense and Derek Shanahan, 5A freshman out there at this right midfield position for Stanford. Mack keeping it in play. Shanahan. Davis denied by the freshman Mack. Alavanya pulled down and a foul is called. History, not Stanford's friend today. Hoosiers have closed the door every chance they have gotten. Well, that makes a whole lot of sense when you know, in fact, that Indiana has the number one team defense in the nation. So a two-goal lead looks almost insurmountable. 45-3 and three over the last two years. Garcia touches it forward. Kovalenko challenges, but Elliott wins it back. Long ball upfield, ball out of play, and a throw in for the Hoosiers. We talked earlier, Morrison, perhaps the hero without a doubt in the semifinal, but they were going to need to get something from the experienced players up front. And to this point, really only Wolfolk, the sophomore, has been a threat. Elliott deep in the midfield. Sauer finally getting onto the pitch. Well, as this half progresses, you will see Lee Morrison push forward more and more, risk a little bit defensively, but he's so powerful and dangerous in the air. He's also a tremendous ball winner on the ground at midfield. So Lee Morrison could be the key to any comeback by this Stanford squad. And we talked about Nick Garcia being one of the stars of the U.S. under-20 national team. Well, Lee Morrison is a teammate of Nick Garcia's on that U-20 squad for the United States and has already had a few inquiries, even in his junior year in high school, from a German Bundesliga team. So they see his soccer potential. Inbody touching it, Sauer touches it back. Inbody to the right foot, the shot over the bar. Good work by Stanford in close quarters. Probably deserved a little bit better than that. TK Inbody. It's a sour sets it up. A good move initially on the first touch by Inbody, leaning back ever so slightly as he tried to power the ball past TJ Hannig, who's been nearly flawless in this match in goal for Indiana. And very aggressive as well. He has not needed to be since the first 10 minutes, but in those first 10 minutes came charging out of the box three times to shut down potential Cardinal chances. Foul far side. And they're actually going to whistle this one against the Hoosiers. And actually change that. They will go back against Stanford in a free kick for Indiana. You look at Dima Kovalenko, a game, a goal, and an assist so far in this match. Alaranya. Lavrenenko also with a goal and an assist. Blasted up the field. And body pushes it up for Siegman. The senior Siegman looking to try and close out a Stanford career, which in all intents and purposes has coincided with the turning point in Cardinal soccer. And it got quickly to grab it. Talked about the early days before Bobby Clark got there. Five wins, 12 losses. The year before Clark took over, and that was the freshman season for players like a Sauer and a Siegman. And just before their career is over, just four short years later, they're fighting for an NCAA title. Hammerich, nice tackle. And Siegman again in full flight. Parrish slips, and Stanford will get the ball back. Jerry Yagley in the foreground. Mike Freitag is longtime assistant alongside of him. Nice dummy by Elliott. Sauer near side. Be hard pressed looking at that picture to find out or to realize that Yegley was up by two goals. Davis's cross off target, slammed away near side. Nice grab on the near side. Jeffrey Wheeler, Stanford coach, just snagged that one. Siegman touching it back. Davis not quite expecting it, and Indiana will get the throw. Eight minutes gone in the second half. Hoosiers continuing to lead at 3-1. It's up to Nick Garcia, 
Stanford will not score again. 16 shutouts this year for the Hoosiers. Another shutout is not a possibility because of the penalty kick, but defense has been impressive in this Indiana drive. In body. Snow showing some speed. Out for the throw. Tuesday, 7.30 Eastern time on ESPN from Baltimore, Maryland. Stuart Scott taking a look at the ESPYs, who will be nominated. Featuring segments with Samuel L. Jackson. He'll host the awards in February along with Will Smith. Again, that's Tuesday, 7.30 Eastern time. So maybe they were getting the tuxes for the ESPYs. Near side, Elliot. New Zealand senior dropping it back to his countryman, Davis. Morrison back to the far side. Stanford playing composed here, not really panicking yet. We mentioned, we mentioned Stanford playing with four backs. Now, Indiana normally plays a 3-5-2, so only three backs, and they only have two pressuring those four Stanford backs. Good hustle by Elliott. When I talked to Jerry Yagley before the match, he says at times they're going to release their wide midfielders to put some extra pressure on the Stanford back four so that they can't work the ball so easily and swing the passes around and then drive long balls into the box. So when you see someone racing out to pressure the wide back of Stanford as they spread the ball, it's because they want to stop those long serves from the wide defenders. Snow on the far side. In fact, almost feels like we could have snow before this day is over, but not quite. Temperature started at 44 degrees, and pretty good feeling we'll be in the 30s before this one is over. Winter is back. The women got it good last week in Greensboro. Temperatures in the 70s. Mother Nature apparently out of her hibernation. Cleared away. Stanford will get a throw right near the stripe. One of the lone mistakes there, in fact, by T.J. Hannock, not keeping that ball in play. And so along with Inbody, the player in front of the 9 and the 10 in Stanford on that left side of the attack, both graduates of Torrey Pines High School in Del Mar, California, both juniors and both on a Stanford squad, which for all intents and purposes has a pretty good chance of being back here next year. They do lose Sauer, they do lose Elliott. They can replace those two. Stanford will be a force to be reckoned with in 1999. Jamie Clark losing some footing, pushing up from the back. Interesting there, Clark, the center back, the sweeper, pushing into the attack, and it was Elliott who dropped back on defense. Really, you'd like to see Elliott stay towards the top of the box with his shot. He can score from almost anywhere within 40 yards. We saw him hit a lethal long-range ball in the semifinal from long range was stopped by Christian Lewis. And another senior for Stanford, Adam Siegman. A very strong first half. In fact, his strong play was the reason, or part of the reason at least, that A.J. Sauer did not make an appearance in the first half of play for Stanford despite being their second leading scorer. No problems for him. No saves needed against Santa Clara. Played nearly 2,100 minutes this year. Only allowing 10 goals coming into today, and this the 11th. Biguardi, one of the tri-captains for the Hoosiers. Near side, Davis looking for Siegman. Fighting for position again, but Parrish steals the ball away. Here's Fundenberger, who came in for Kovalenko just moments ago. Advantage played as Stanford won the ball back. Each of these teams with eight returning starters from the 97 season, that helps bring you, bring you to a championship weekend. But a couple of guys missing a large part of the season for Stanford due to injury. 
Snow crossing the ball. Fundenberger challenges and back to Mack. Mack fires the shot, which sails wide to the right of Adam Zapala. But Stanford without Sean Silvis, who was injured in mid-October, out for the season. Also without Eric Vandeveld, a senior defender. So they, they took, took a hit in terms of injuries. Indiana, we talked to Jerry Yeagle before the game. He says it's the only season he's ever had with Indiana Hoosiers where he really had no, no starting player miss the game. That'll help you win a championship. Looks like Funderburger might have gotten a boot in on that one off the belly. And Indiana coming the other way. Only really injured player and somewhat minor at that as you can see Alavania running forward. Parole a little too anxious. He touches the ball across the end line in frustration. He's going to get a talking to. Could have been a card. But the referee Lou Labadia perhaps smartly just having a talking to with Carroll saying you can't do that again. Men's College Cup Championship game, Stanford against Indiana from Richmond, Virginia. Phil Shane, Ty Keo with you. Winter right around the corner. But perhaps another Indiana championship as well. Talking about the injuries, Alavania with the hamstring coming into this weekend. And a little bit of a sprained ankle in the game against Santa Clara, but showing no effects of that here today. I'm not so sure, Phil. It's, it's pretty obvious that Lazo, Lazo Alavania is not going full speed. He hasn't needed to. He's so intelligent. He's so skillful. And the guys around him are compensating. So a guy like Gino DeGuardi, some of the younger players that surround Lazo Alavania have done a little bit of the extra workload. They've taken on the extra work, and he has still been able to do the distribution out of midfield that he's in there to perform for Indiana. Aaron Jones, who started the game against Maryland in the semis, back out there today, senior out of San Jose. TK Inbody will take a seat. See if Jones can keep the pressure up down this right flank. Wolfolk still on the bench. Actually, right now, behind it, loosening up, getting set for his second half appearance. About a half hour left, one hour gone. Nice turn, far side, Shanahan. Pass to the middle, Sauer, using his center of gravity to shield that ball away, but finally slammed upfield by DeGuardi. Here's Davis. DeGuardi plays a tough defense there. Really trying to intimidate A.J. Sauer, knowing that A.J. Sauer is one of the trickier dribblers out there for Stanford. They're all just trying to touch it through the entire Stanford defense. Two goals in the quarters, two goals in the semis. He has one here today. And it looked like on that end he was trying to keep the streak going. Near side, Elliott with some space, and he has pushing up. Davis down the flank. Elliott will use him. Davis to the edge of the box. Davis too anxious. And perhaps the first signs of frustration. And perhaps a sign of the pressure getting to junior defender Gerard Davis out of New Zealand. He actually had a very good first half, I thought, coming forward intelligently, getting into the attack for Stanford. That time he timed his run well. It was a good ball by Simon Elliott, but the execution left a lot to be desired on the cross. Into the attack, Shanahan. He has played well since entering the game, tripped up, kept his balance after Max challenge, knocked to the turf. Looked like he might have taken an elbow to the throat right near the edge of the box. Good hustle, remember, brought in for his attacking skills. The balance there you mentioned, but the ch initial challenge from behind, he's piled into by Nick Garcia. Ryan Mack tackling from behind. The call made. Looked like the referee was too busy talking to Mack to notice Garcia's challenge. Garcia, both elbows up towards the throat. Touching it in, Elliott into the box. Elliott, far post, headed in just wide. Almost an own goal, but the ball cleared away. A little bit of trickery from Stanford on the restart. It looked to be Dennis Fideski who might have saved a goal for Indiana right near his goal line. Crossed by Simon Elliott, the dangerous one. 
Sanford trying to take the corner quickly, but Indiana making the substitution. Alavania limping slightly as he makes off the bench, makes his way towards the bench. Zapala punching it, or make that panic pushing it out. Stanford holding on. Hamlet. Up the line, Elliott. Elliott can shoot from here. Instead, he touches it towards the penalty spot, finally slammed away by the freshman Mack. Morrison could not hold on to possession, and here comes Indiana. Two against three, but it's Carroll looking to round off. Carroll in the box, takes a tumble, no call. Shoulder to shoulder charge, says the referee. Shandar got the inside track on Carroll just as Carroll tried to accelerate past him. So Shandar used the shoulder. The ball appeared to be in playing distance, so most likely the correct call. How close was Stanford to getting another goal? And here, Carroll almost getting his second. Is, if the ball is within playing distance, it is perfectly legal to charge with the shoulder. It was close enough, I guess, to be playable distance. About 25 minutes left to go here in regulation. A long cross into the middle. Lavrinenko tries to bring it down. Mack fighting for it, fighting a little bit too hard. Number 18 for Stanford, Derek Shanahan, just a freshman, but he's made a difference here. He's got some good speed. He drew that foul earlier, which set up a couple of good attacks for Stanford. Hammerich, far side. Have not really been able to use his long throws deep because Stanford hasn't been able to get deep that much. It's also much more difficult to make the long throw with a wet ball. So that has lessened the impact of Hemorrhage's ability to drive the ball into the penalty area from the throwing. Everyone else bundled up and shivering in your right. I mean, Bobby Clark looks like he's about ready to ask for the suntan lotion. Flipped back. Elliott controls for Stanford. Hemorrhage up the line, long ball. Jamie Clark, the sweeper for Stanford, now very obviously is pushed up into midfield as they look to cut back this two-goal lead that Indiana has at the moment. Sour challenges. Basketball coming your way on the deuce. More on that in a moment. And back. To the defensive end, no problems for Adam Zapala. Cupertino, California, sophomore. Beaten early twice. The penalty kick got Stanford back in it. And perhaps a very fortunate goal for the Hoosiers after the miss kick by the sophomore Fundenberg. Nice touch to the middle for Gaw. Gaw on the left foot. Gaw, the rifle shot, splits the legs of Hannig, but it could not squirt through to the line. Well, Indiana gets off the hook there. A giveaway at midfield by Nick Garcia was picked up by Simon Elliott, who set up a chance for Chan, Chan Gaw. And this dipping ball, a wet ball skipping into the box, smothering it at the last minute, T.J. Hannig. And Stanford would have really made a game of this one at that point, with just under 23 minutes remaining. Would have made it 3-2. to two. Under 23 minutes remaining. Morrison to the middle for Clark. Experienced senior, 97 All-American. Leading by example here today, but they need something to go right offensively. Talk about perhaps the Hoosiers being predestined. Fundenberger whiffs on a shot and it goes right to Carroll. There, Stanford had a great chance for the ball to squirt through the legs of Hannig, and it just dies right behind him. Oh, Hannig was very fortunate. Adam Siegman was right there on the doorstep. Could have easily gone to Siegman instead of just staying right underneath Hannig. There's Morrison. And again, his second foray into the attack and his pass leaving much to be desired. Back to Zipala. Eight saves needed to get through Virginia in the quarterfinals. Back 
that was the key game for Stanford at the quarterfinal round to go into Virginia and beat them 3-0. Two, two goals by Simon Elliott, one by Adam Siegman. Here's Elliott, deflected across, far side, corner kick. Zabala probably hasn't even touched the ball eight times today, unless you count picking it up out of the net after the three goals. Blasted back to midfield by Mack. Daw, as Stanford looks to keep the pressure going. Here's Davis, he can push into the attack. Far side to Elliott. Hammers. Back to Elliott. Mark into the attack. Elliott on the right foot. Elliott bending it far post. Couldn't quite get all of that one. Looked like he tried to place it and might have kicked up a little bit of the turf. Well, he may have been looking for Adam Siegman, who was making a run near the far post. Parole stripped of the ball. Went straight to another white jersey. Mundenberger to Parole. And one back by Clark, who's quickly back in defense. Approaching the 20-minute mark of time left in regulation. Elliott up the line and too far out of play. A throw-in upcoming. The Hoosiers will have it, but a timeout on the field. And when we come back, a championship for the Hoosiers or a comeback for the Cardinal. Eurosport, call for a free soccer catalog, 1-800-934-3876. Go for a mouthful, go for the fun. Oh, go for kids. Go for kids for everyone. Empty the box, very loud. Eat those go for kids to Exercise lately. If you're going to create electricity, use it. The Seiko Kinetic Watch, electrically charged every time you move your body. Thank you. Next. Howard Sherman. You'll be a fair and impartial juror in this trial. Yes, sir. I think I can. I think everybody has the right to a fair trial in this country, and uh, innocent until proven guilty. That's my motto. <laughs> Excuse. If you're gonna get out of jury duty, what? get out of jury duty. If you're gonna get a burger, get a burger. The Monster Burger, only at Hardee's. Two large juicy patties with the most bacon and cheese you can get. You gonna go? Go all out. Virginia Holiday Travel Kit. Call today. And welcome back. Just over 20 minutes left to go in Stanford's dream, unless they can come from behind. Indiana deservedly here today, but the two Hoosiers up for the Herman Award, beaten out by that man. Wojtek Krakowiak from Clemson, NCAA's leading scorer, the winner of the Herman Award. Great performance by him this year. 31 goals. By the way, Cindy Parlow won the Women's Player of the Year Award. A couple of substitutions for Indiana University. Alavanya is back out there, as is Kovalenko. So is Fundenberger, and at the moment, looks like he wishes he was on the bench, getting the worst of that collision. So a restart upcoming. Indiana will have it. 20 minutes left. They lead by two. and. Looking to add to it here. Across to Alavania. They make that to Lavrinenko. Lavrinenko into the area looking for snow. Back to Kovalenko. Offside the call. Have the honor here to introduce perhaps one of the all-time heroes in World Cup history from England. And back in 1966, a name that I'm sure still 
brings a smile to many English soccer fans. Jeff Hurst, only man to score a hat trick in a World Cup final. And uh, first of all, congratulations still on that fact and glad you could join us. Thank you, Phil. It's nice to be here. This uh, uh, the game that's a bit wet like English, in English weather. <laughs> Bobby Clark was saying this is just a good summer day in Scotland. Yeah. <laughs> Because they, they're more northern than us. They get to the weather far worse. So what do you think so far? Obviously, the weather conditions have played a little bit of a role. Yeah, I mean, it's the first half seeing Indiana. They looked, uh, Stanford looked like they could get back into the game. They're trying to go to the middle to, for me a bit too much. It's a bit wet to get bogged down. I mean, they've just got to get it wide into, into wing positions and get the ball in crosses. I think they, they'd have a better chance for me. And I guess, quick, quick assessment. I guess <laughs> we, sh we should call you Sir Jeff Hurst. Congratulations Thank as you. well on, on the honor only a month ago. That's right. It's a fantastic honor. Uh, awarded by the Queen um, for services to football over 35 years. And when you consider in our history of football of over 100 years, I'm only one of uh, five nights um, for football. So it's an absolutely unbelievable honor. Um, it's brilliant. Matthew Moses entering the game for Stanford, the sophomore out of South Laguna, California, checking in for Adam Siegman. So Siegman will take a break, and Wolfolk remains on the bench for the Cardinal. They still trail by two. A little bit of a trip, and the foul will be called. Stanford will get a restart some 40 yards away. Do you ever get tired when you think back to 1966 of recapping those goals, especially the, the controversial one? What do you mean the controversial one? Well <laughs> I mean over. the one that was, was well across the line. You heard about it in the state. It was a meter over the line. No, seriously, it's uh, it's been a, a great day for the country. One of the biggest we've ever had, and, and uh, people in this our country won't forget about it, and they won't let me forget about it. And it's far, far more good than bad to talk about that World Cup. It was a great day for the, for the history of our country. Kovalenko dropping the ball back. His countryman Lavrenenko tripped up, and a throw in upcoming. Obviously, England perhaps having its best team maybe since 66 this past year and perhaps a little unlucky not to advance any further. But when you take a look, obviously a goal scorer you have the reputation of being, but a, a young goal scorer in Michael Owen putting a lot of smiles on faces this year. Yeah, very much. He had a fantastic World Cup and scored probably one of the best goals in the tournament. And when you consider he's only 18 years of age, he has a great future in the game. And we're now starting to produce some very exciting young players for England. A timeout, and it looks like we will have a card coming out. Morrison colliding with Lavrinenko, and the Indiana junior will get the card. Now, Jeff, you experienced American soccer a few decades ago. Now you're back now, also observing. How much have things changed? Well, I think the soccer in the States has progressed uh, tremendously well. I think it's, it's always very important. We thought at the time, those decades ago, that America has to, has to produce its own homegrown talent. And with these sort of, uh, this, this championship, the NCAA is starting to do that. But it's not going to come overnight. It does take um, 10, 15 years to start producing top quality players. But I, I think we're well on the way to seeing that. Jeff, perhaps you've heard of the exploits of DC United, the two-time champion of Major League Soccer, now becoming champion of all of the Americas, defeating Vasco da Gama in the Inter-American Cup. And in fact, only two non-American players in that DC United lineup, Marco Echeverri and Jaime Moreno. The rest of them, all Americans. Yeah, that, that's good to see. I think I've heard in, in the Major Soccer League, it's probably 50-50. So that sort of uh, st statistic is fantastic. And I think you've got to produce them. There's got to be more than at least half money, playing money. For, the, for, the, for the teams over here. We say that now. Especially since you guys make it so hard for us to play over there. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we're seeing some good American players getting into the leagues in England now and doing very well. And I think that can only be encouraged. One of the best is the ball coming in towards the net. Elliott challenges. It sails away and a goal kick up coming. But one of the best the U.S. has produced in recent years had a chance to play for one of your old clubs for a brief period in John Hutz yeah. West Ham. John Hutz is a very good player. He was a very good premiership player and I think we're, we're starting to see that and we need to see more of it. Before we let you go, what brings you here stateside? Well, we're looking at through Ryder Colleges. We produce a sportswear by a company called Spall. I've got involved in the last six, eight months and we think there's a, a huge market not only in Europe but also in the US for this sports and leisure wear. And whilst I was here, I took the opportunity to see it firsthand. Alavania pushing up for Indiana and cleared away by Stanford. How long do you get a chance to stick around? It's only a short trip, a couple of days. And so it's really in terms of seeing the final here today for you know, a couple of hours or so before I get back to New York. 
I've got a couple of meetings there to, to carry on the business. The life of a British knight. <laughs> <laughs> Still as busy as ever. Here's Sauer touching the ball back to Elliott, but intercepted by Alavagna. We appreciate the time, and as I said before, it is definitely an honor. And again, as, as Ty alluded to, congratulations on uh, getting a chance to meet the Queen and coming away with a little something for it. That's right, Con. Thanks, Phil. Thanks, Ty, as well. Great it's it's an honor to meet a legend. Jeff Hurst, nice thank you very much. Sir Jeff Hurst, MBE, and uh, one of the greatest to ever play the game. It's a little deflected in Morris and touches it away. And still 14 minutes left to go in regulation. A foul from behind and another yellow card coming out. Alavagna will go under the book. Apparently Labadia getting a sale on six packs for yellow cards today. But the score remains 3-1 and those are the only numbers that matter at the moment. 14 minutes left to go. I just mentioned to Jeff Hurst as he was leaving that, that my dad played for the 1950 U.S. squad that, that beat England at the World Cup I was wondering in why Brazil. I was frowning as he walked he, he out. He said, oh, thank you very much. <laughs> he was doing fine until then. <laughs> Far side throw upcoming for Stanford. It's just one of those things, just set him up on the air, build up, build up, build up, and then just like chop him down to the knees. Uh, he, he has plenty of reason to be happy. Stanford will need to do some chopping of this two-goal lead. Indiana in command here. Stanford at times looking to get more players forward, especially Lee Morrison, who can be so dangerous on corner kicks. Any high balls into the box. Carroll back into the game. Fundenberger takes a seat. Those two combined on perhaps one of the strangest goals in this 98 NCAA tournament. Fundenberger, a nice move to lift the ball over the defender and then maybe hit the ball with his laces if that is it spun straight to the path of Carroll and with the Cardinal defense frozen, gave Indiana back its two goal lead. And fluky though it may be, that might be enough to give Indiana the championship because up until that point, Stanford was holding their own. And here's another chance for Carroll. Carroll, far side. Straight on target, but saved by Zapala. Again, Carroll looking for his third straight two-goal game, but he won't get it there. Alexi Carroll in full stride, released that ball so quickly. But look at it again. Watch the skill involved in his ability at speed to keep the ball under full control and very close to his body, so close that he can release a shot almost with no preparation. In fact, it nearly fooled Zapala. He didn't expect the shot to come off that quickly. He was not able to hold it. Each of the Ukrainians with a goal and an assist today. Here's the third in Lavrenenko. So impressive, Karol's close control at full speed. and the tri-captain touching it away, Andrew Parrish, senior out of Worthington, Ohio, just outside of Columbus. Another Hoosier via Columbus next door to us. Had the chance to see him on Friday as the ball headed in the air by Stan. Fired shot far side and somehow T.J. Hannick grabs hold of the spinning ball. Not a day in which the breaks are going to fall for Stanford. Very good chance here for Stanford to narrow the lead. The ball struck low and hard by Shan Gaw. He had the other one that was a very difficult save earlier for T.J. Haddock. Far side Stanford For the, the second ball. time, we see a loose ball pop right back into the hands of T.J. Haddock. Here comes... Kovalenko near side. Nice tackle by Elliott out of play. He has not given up yet. Substitutions getting set to come in for Indiana. Looks like Fundenberger again alongside Justin Tauber. ESPN2 continues its coverage of NCAA basketball. UMass taking on Villanova. Princeton against Alabama. Birmingham comes your way Tuesday the 15th at 8 p.m. from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and Birmingham, Alabama, respectively. 
college basketball in the news Tuesday night. Had the chance to see Fundenberger early today. Tauber, 5'7", sophomore out of Highland, Indiana. Perhaps a little bit of a reward for his efforts in practice this year as the number 14 has not seen much action with Indiana. He did play in the quarterfinal victory at Clemson. Going back to that game, probably the most critical step for Indiana to be able to get past number one ranked Clemson at Clemson at the quarterfinal stage. Especially considering the fact they're coming off of a couple of double overtime victories. The fact Indiana even had the wheels and the legs to keep up with a very speedy and dangerous Clemson Tigers squad, amazing enough in itself. Well, and the main player for that Clemson squad, Wojtek Krakowiak, the one given the Player of the Year award and the top scorer in the nation in college soccer. Krakowiak, also our ESPN.com, Soccer Times Player of the Year, along with Danielle Petopoulos. Petopoulos, of course, will be busy Women's World Cup right around the corner. Of course, the final playoff spot is the ball coming in, headed away by the Stanford defense. And touched away nicely by Caw to Elliott. Final spot being fought for between Mexico and Argentina. And a trip up in midfield. Foul called against Mack. First game played on Friday, and one of your old buddies back in action. His first game as coach of the women's national team, Leo Cuellar. Guiding Mexico to a 3-1 victory. Among the goals, Monica Gerardo from Notre Dame. One of six Mexican-Americans on the Mexican national team. Who will get there? We'll have to wait and find out on the 19th. Game two in Buenos Aires. And it'll be a lot more difficult to win down there. Ball well cleared a moment ago with his head by Garcia at the back. That's him organizing the Hoosier defense as they hold on here. Nick Garcia called for the penalty kick controversially in the first half. And back to the raising arms of Hannah. Last time Indiana University had a two goal lead in the NCAA playoffs was back in 1989 against Santa Clara. A game at Rutgers University, 4 2. Santa Clara ended up winning that game and went on to go through overtime and actually end up tying Virginia for a national championship. And to tell you the truth, all of a sudden, just remembering back to that day, I feel a heck of a lot warmer today. It was freezing in Piscataway that day. Long ball into the area, headed away by Morrison to the top of the box. That in the semifinals, Santa Clara and Virginia, the championship game. Here's Mac. Nice ball, Fundenberger beating the offside trap, but not enough on the pass. Moses, a nice little flick. Clark charging up from the defense and dropping back to help out Aaron Jones. Looks like they've actually just pushed Clark up front, trying to get something going in the last six and a half minutes. Well, they're probably going to have to push Lee Morrison up front also. And I'm surprised that Corey Wolfhook has not reappeared on the field for Stanford with his tremendous speed. At this point, they need players with the getaway possibilities. Any loose ball, he could pounce upon it and run away from the Indiana defense. And Corey Wolfog has been watching from the sideline here in the second half. Nice effort by Jones, but couldn't keep it in play. And Wolfog continues to loosen up. Looks like he's about ready to check back in. Take a look at the average over the last four years. Nearly 20,000, over 19,000. That is an NCAA record. Over 15,000 in attendance here today, despite the poor weather and perhaps the absence of a team that might have even sold this place out in Virginia. Well, even had Maryland made it to the final, being an ACC school would have gotten some more following in this part of the country. Interesting again, it's Morrison taking the throw, not Hemorrhage. That takes away one of the threats inside the box to the six and headed away. Morrison will pick it up again. Service to the back post and Hannig grabbed that one. He read it well with Elliott on the doorstep.
T.J. Hannig did not need to make a save against Santa Clara, but he has been solid enough today and perhaps a little lucky. Anytime those loose balls, those rebounds drop right back under you as a goalkeeper, it's your day. Vandenberger to the middle. Lavrenenko could not wait, control. Wait. Four and a half left to go. Just stretch it to scream. Basically what that means nicely is kick it and run. And while you might not like it at this moment, Stanford's not gonna be able to score from their own end. You gotta get it into the Indiana half. Outside the lines on ESPN, Wednesday the 16th, 7.30 Eastern time, homophobia in sports. The experience of gay athletes focusing specifically on the male, male and female as well. And the gay games, what they're about. It's Outside the Lines, the award-winning sports investigative program on ESPN. And again, Wednesday, 7.30 Eastern. Well, it's almost a Hail Mary situation for Stanford. When they say stretch it, they've just got to get some balls up into the Indiana penalty area and hope for once that they get the lucky bounce or they get the situation where a missed kick results in a goal like it did for Indiana when they scored... Their third goal of the match just before halftime. College Cup championship game continuing from a frigid Richmond, Virginia. Indiana looking to add to the lead. Deflected at the top of the six. Still loose. Matt gets ahead to it. Lavrenenko volleys over the bar. Carroll thought he had his second of the day. Alexi Carroll was on the doorstep. And credit number two for Stanford, Gerard Davis. For good position, dangerous cross in here. The ball deflected by Simon Elliott, but number two for Stanford gets his foot to it as Alexi Carroll got crunched. Alexi Carroll was about to score had it not been for Gerard Davis. Last year, Indiana came in 23 and 0 into the semifinals, only to be knocked out by UCLA. Today, they might have a couple of losses, including another one to UCLA this year, but. They have been on a roll at the end of the season since the beginning of November. Well deserving, but how would you compare perhaps this year's Hoosier team to last year's? This is a better team because of the experience. They lack a little bit of leadership. Two players gone from last year's team. Chris Klein, who moved into MLS. Caleb Porter, also big leadership. They've lacked for a little bit of that, but in terms of overall maturity, for sure, having eight of your 10 field players starting back has made a difference. Bobby Clark, on the other hand, a coach so good, he's been receiving inquiries from Europe and in MLS, but university raised, likes the aspect of teaching, and asked him bluntly whether he ever planned on going into the pros. He doesn't plan it. He likes the teaching aspect of coaching. 140 left to go. In fact, he said his university education, which is not normally the way soccer players are raised in Europe, did not really hamper him that much. He said after a couple of years, he was just as silly as the rest of the Scottish national team. Well, we saw a moment ago the shot totals. Only a 10 to 7 advantage by Indiana over Stafford here. And really, the 3 to 1 score gives you an idea that this was a very one sided match. When you consider that the third goal from Indiana really resulted from a missed kick, it was a fluke goal. Fundenberger miss hits the ball, goes directly to Alexi Carroll. This is really a 2 to 1 game. And here's Fundenberger beating the trap. Carroll on the back post. Cross blasted in. Elliott intercepts, and less than a minute left to go for Stanford. Jokes aside, Bobby Clark has this Cardinal team among the nation's best, and it looks like they are poised to stay there. Not easy when you consider tuition at $30,000 a year, but the Cardinal impressive. Alexi Carroll, our Adidas player of the game, deservedly so, most likely, although still not formally announced, the player of the tournament as the ball into the area headed away. Two goals in the quarterfinals to knock off Clemson, two goals to help knock off Santa Clara in the semis and a goal here today in the championship game. Also an assist on Lavrenenko's goal. 13, 12, Elliott at midfield, still yet to get on track. Seven seconds, the clock ticks. The referee looks like he will let it tick out. 
and regulation has ended. The game is over, and the Indiana Hoosiers are the 1998 NCAA champions, their fourth national title. Indiana and the Ukraine connection came in as favorites to this championship weekend. We see Simon Elliott, one of the leaders for the Stanford team, and Indiana would not be denied this year after having come so close in 97. Alexei Karol, five goals in the postseason, and none bigger than here today. 3-1, the Hoosiers are the champions. Imagine uh, the look on your wife's face when you give her a toaster for Christmas. And then think of the look on her face, uh, as you, I'm sure you've seen before, the look that she gets when you give her that fine piece of jewelry from Goldcasters. We have customers that have actually told us, you know, it wouldn't be Christmas if they didn't see that Goldcasters box under the tree. When was the last time you took her breath away? Don't you just love Christmas time? I do. It's a great day at Teletron. I'm an account executive here at Teletron, and I truly enjoy working here because of the unlimited income potential. I'm a team manager. It's really fun, and the excitement is contagious. At Teletron, we offer an excellent compensation plan. We offer great pay, three weeks vacation, and paid benefits. You, too, can be part of one of the fastest growing companies in the nation. We have a wide variety of positions available from administrative to sales to management. It's a fabulous opportunity, so call us today at 336-3000. Outside the Lines takes a look inside the sports closet. Is homophobia shutting the door on today's athletes? Outside the Lines, the world of the gay athlete. Wednesday at 7.30 on ESPN. Today's Men's College Cup National Championship has been brought to you by College Soccer Weekly Online, the only place to look for scores, news, and in-depth features of your game. www.collegesoccer.com by the Chevy Venture. The Venture is here. Let's go. And by Adidas, official sponsor of Women's World Cup USA 99. It was not easy getting here, but once they did, the Indiana Hoosiers proved their worth. They called it unfinished business. They lost last year, seeded eighth this year. Last year in triple overtime in the national semifinal, they lost to eventual champion UCLA, and they were only seeded eighth in this year's tournament, so they had something to prove. They definitely proved it here this weekend. The final score, Indiana 3 and Stanford 1, the 1998 NCAA Division I men's soccer champions, Indiana. Thanks for joining us, everybody. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports, shooting Sports America next on ESPN.